It is the first of the month, so as usual, what we do on this channel is we look at the monthly candle closes of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and altcoins to be able to see what that tells us for the month ahead and what that potentially predicts for what is coming in the price action. What is up, guys? If you are new, welcome to the channel. My name is Dirk. Subscribe to the channel down below. Click that notification bell. If you want to get on my email list so I can send you an email every time I upload a new video, first link in the description down below. You get my free crypto masterclass and you will get important updates and when I upload videos. You can also follow on Instagram, follow on Twitter and join our free public telegram. The links are in the description down below. So first things first, let's look at the Bitcoin monthly historical returns to see how last month ended up playing out. And as you can see here, minus 15.6% for May. So it was once again a red May. Um, historically, you can see since 2013, it's been pretty equal in terms of being red or being green. Minus 15%. That is pretty much on par. We had minus 18, minus 35% last year was a bit extreme with the sell-off. So it is nothing too crazy, nothing out of the ordinary so far. Now we have a similar thing with June where it tends to be pretty even towards red and green, maybe a little bit more green than is red. But you can see even last year, it was slightly red. The year before that, slightly red. 2019, we had a nice green year. 2018, we had minus 14%. So this doesn't really tell us too much. There is still completely possibility for this to be able to go both ways and to also either be red or end up being green. I think we're gonna see a bit of both personally, and we might still end up seeing this as closing in a green month with some intra-month red. And that's what I'm gonna be showing you in the charts right now. Also, this is going to be the last month for the quarterly close. So we have 30 days left until the quarter closes and we get those results. And you can see on the quarterly returns, the historic returns, they have mostly been green with the exception of last year being a big red down quarter of minus 40%. But I think last year was a little bit exceptional because we had a huge run up from October all the way to, to basically to May, massive, massive run. So that sell off came in Q2, which kind of skewed these results. You can see the negative other reds are minus 7% and minus 3.97%. So it wasn't really that big. Currently we're sitting on minus 30%, which is getting up there to be the second biggest in a negative uh, close. So we're gonna have to see how June closes. But if we get a big pump towards the end of this month, towards the close, that could really change these results. So we will end up seeing how this is going to end up closing. All right, so Bitcoin is currently trading at $31,520. This is the monthly chart. Before I share my thoughts on the chart right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a little bit from last month's prediction, which I always make on the first. You can go and see these back on the channels to see what how that played out and if it was accurate or not. So this does not look like there is much strength left for the bulls. And as you can see, I showed you with the, the stock markets, what's happening there, the bearish pressure, the dollar index that's going up, the, the potential expected uh, rate hikes that are still coming later this year and this month too. And all of that puts bearish pressure also on Bitcoin and crypto, which seems to have a lot of correlation with the stock market and the overall macro environment. So at this point, short term, it's going to be tricky to, to say anything. We can see here, there's a lot of activity within this range. Now, if we do get a stock market sell-off, I do think there's possibility that we can go a bunch lower on Bitcoin and crypto. It's likely going to follow, which means we could get a capitulation. And I'll show you on the weekly chart in a second. But basically, the 200-week moving average is still a potential target, which would be the low $20,000 level for Bitcoin. All right, so you can see, you can go and view the whole video if you want, the link will be down in the description below. But you can see we were trading at about $38,000 last month when I made that video. And I said, if there is risk with the stock market sell-off, there is potential capitulation risk with the 200 week moving average, the low 20,000s, currently about 22,000 for that 200 week moving average as the potential target. And that is pretty much exactly what happened. We ended up selling off and we saw a low, you can see over here, $25,400 in uh, the previous month. So that was once again, a pretty accurate forecast of what was going to happen. And that is why I make these videos. So if you're not subscribed yet, subscribe. I do this on the first every month and you can go back in history. Um, my predictions tend to be pretty accurate. I'm not always right. Of course, sometimes I get it wrong, but in the big picture percentage wise, it's, it's pretty okay, but right? it's pretty decent. So what do I think is going to happen 
this month. So based on this candle, this was obviously a bearish candle. It was another big red candle. And even though we wicked and we pulled back a bit, there was some bear strength from that wick back up. This is not looking bullish still at all, in my opinion. So what do we have here? Well, this is the 50 month moving average, which is almost the same as basically the 200 week moving average, very similar. They are around the $22,000 level. And I've been saying this since uh, late last year, actually, since about December last year, once we break the 50 week moving average, the likely target for downside continuation is the 200 week moving average. And that is what we've been trending towards. We still have not touched it or reached it yet. It's no guarantee that we have to reach it, but it is still the likely target. And I do think that before this bear market is finished, that we are going to at least retest this $25,000 level or go slightly below it and go into the 22,000s. Maybe even if things get too crazy, we can wick below 20K. That is a possibility. Don't know how likely it is, but it is a possibility. So as you can see, if you look at how bottoms are formed, there tend to be multiple wicks, multiple months spent at the bottom. Even last year in the May bottom, here we had three months with three wicks retesting that bottom. Even here we had two. So here we just have the one. It is very likely that we get close to that at the bottom. So you can see we have the monthly open last month that 37,500. To be able to get more bullish on crypto, I wanna see Bitcoin close back above here with the monthly close above this 37. Until then, any bounces, whether we go, you know, 32, 33, 36, 35, whatever it is, those could all be bear market rallies that still get sold off. Like on, on the monthly chart, it can just be a wick up and then pull back down and hit this 200 um, week moving average or this 50 monthly moving average that is, you know, the bottom over here that has historically been the bottom. So I do th still think there is a good chance we can see um, somewhere between 20 and 25K this month. And the upside, um, I think it would be limited to around 34, 35,000, maybe in an extreme case 37, but I doubt it at this point in time. If, however, we can break back above that 37,500 and we can get a monthly close above there, then things will start getting interesting for the bulls. So you can see I changed it to weekly over here, the 50 week moving average, which we wanna get back above really to be back in a bullish trend is currently at 44,000. Obviously the longer we spend below it, the lower it ends up going, but that is really the ultimate signal for being back in a bull market. And of course that is going to take time to get back there. So you can see how close the 200 week moving average really is. So the whole idea was once we broke below this 50 week moving average, the target would be the 200 as it has been many times in history. If you go and look, we broke below it, the target was the 200. We broke below it, fake out, target was the 200. You can go back in history and it happens over and over again, not just with Bitcoin, with all sorts of charts, whether it be in Forex, whether it be in stock markets. When we break the 50, we go back to the 200. That tends to happen a lot of the time. So you can see we can get a bit of a bounce here. We have had nine red weekly candles. We're seeing a bit of green now. Don't know if it's gonna end the week green or not. Maybe we get a bit of a bounce. But like I said, this 37,500 is about the maximum, I would say. If anything under that could still be a bounce that sells off and ends up back at the 200, which is what I'm looking for as a target for the end of the bear market. It could actually overshoot that a little bit to the downside too. So be careful for that if it happens. So one thing I also wanna bring your attention to, I made a video about this whole topic about the three day death cross. I will link to it up here or in the description down below so you can go and view that in full if you haven't done that yet. But basically there's a pattern here on this three day chart. When we get a death cross of the 50 moving average moving down through the 200, the last two bear markets, it has predicted the bottom of that bear market within three to four weeks every time. So you can see here in the 2015 bear market, we got that three day death cross Four weeks later, we were at the absolute low, a wick low, 63% down from the point of the death cross three to four weeks later from that point. Then in 2018, we had a similar situation. We got the death cross and three to four weeks later, we got the ultimate sell off, which ended up being about 50% from the point of the cross. Now, at the beginning of May or early May, we got another death cross on this three day chart meaning that if this pattern repeats a third time, no guarantees it will, but if it does, since it's predicted the bottoms of both bear markets, and again with moving averages tending to just be uh, the mean where the price moves above and below, 
like a rubber band, it can only move so much above it before it reverts and snaps back and then overshoots to the other side. So we had the overshoot to the upside, we pulled back to it, now we're overshooting to the downside. We had that death cross in early May and if that pattern repeats, then three to four weeks later would be around seven to 15 June, so within the next two weeks. And if we do get that capitulation, which like I've shown you, the monthly and the weekly chart looks like it's completely possible still to go into the low 20Ks to hit that 200 week moving average, that drop, that target would be about $20,000, maybe even a little bit less. So it is still entirely possible. If we get a capitulation within the next two weeks, we go into the low 20,000s, we hit that 200 week moving average, that that may actually end up being the very bottom of this entire bearish trend that we've been in since November of last year. After that, if that plays out, we could see a couple of months of sideways action and consolidation accumulation, and then a continuation of the bull run towards the end of the year or 2023. That is still a scenario I'm leaning towards. So far, this could still play out. So by next month's monthly update, we will know if that ended up playing out in that way. Maybe it won't, but I'm still leaning towards that actually being a decent possibility. Okay, then let's have a quick look at Ethereum. I didn't cover Ethereum in last month's update because it was already getting too long and we focused more on Bitcoin. So Ethereum also in the same way, the monthly chart does not look great at all. It looks pretty bearish. That monthly candle from last month was a big red monthly candle. So basically what we had is we had this bear flag over here, it broke down from the bear flag and it continued. And I do still think this is going lower in the same way if Bitcoin continues to sell off and it hits that 200 week moving average, I think that Ethereum is going somewhere between 1400 and maybe even $800 on the downside. You can see it's currently $1,930. So some potential targets that we have to look out for is we obviously have this wick that was the all time high in uh, 2017, of course, or 2018, January 2018. That could be something potential there, but you can see the body candle is at around 1111 over there, which coincides here with this 50 month um, average. And then if things really continue to sell off for whatever reason, keep in mind, although Ethereum is kind of in between altcoins and Bitcoin, it is still more behaving like an altcoin than it does like Bitcoin, meaning that it overshoots to the upside, overperforms Bitcoin, on bull markets, but it also overperforms in bear markets, meaning it sells off more than Bitcoin does. So it is completely possible, even if Bitcoin only hits the low 20,000s, that Ethereum, you know, due to the collateral that's locked in DeFi protocols, due to maybe uh, NFT project founders or other project founders that have raised money in Ethereum, that have their treasury in Ethereum, they decide, hey, I'm gonna just dump it all to try and save what's left to be able to uh, keep the, the treasury going for our bills and our developers and all that kind of stuff. So it could really create some sort of spiral effect where Ethereum ends up selling off more than Bitcoin. And if that happens and it really does sell off, you can see seven to $800 might not be impossible, even though it sounds pretty low right now. Um, keep in mind, that wouldn't even be that crazy because Let's get this measurement tool. You can see in um, in 2018, the bear market, it had a 94% sell-off for Ethereum, right? So far, we haven't even had close to that. You can see, so far, it's only been a 64% sell-off. So even going back to about seven or $800 would be not even as much as the 2018 bear market. So it is not impossible, it is actually completely possible. So what we are seeing here, big bearish candle, I think we get continuation this month. This is likely, unless we get a small little candle here, that's a possibility. But um, I do still think Ethereum is going somewhere between $1,400 and $800 before this bear market is finished. And of course, if Bitcoin were to sell off this month, if the stock market sell off more, then it's likely Ethereum and altcoins also continue to sell off. We really want to see, before getting bullish on um, on Ethereum once again, is we want to get a close back above this monthly candle, which is above say 2726 say $2,700. We need to get back above there with a monthly close for us to get really bullish again on Ethereum. And you can see here changing it to a weekly chart that 200 week moving average for Ethereum is also, that's pretty close. You can see it's sitting at about $1,200. We still have a lot of overhead resistance here between say 2,500 and, and 2,000 really, where even if we do get a little bits of a bounce, it is possible, maybe a short squeeze, maybe a little bit of relief, but 
more likely, in my opinion, is we are still going to go lower, like I said, between $800 and $1,400 before the bottom is in for Ethereum, in my opinion. Now we don't have time to run through all of the different altcoins and mostly altcoins follow what Bitcoin is going to do. So if Bitcoin is going to continue going lower, it's likely that altcoins are still going to go continue to go lower. Once Bitcoin finds a bottom, then it is likely that altcoins can also start to find a bottom and maybe start going higher. But once again, what tends to happen is that only after Bitcoin starts to rise again, first the money flows into Bitcoin, only after weeks or months, altcoins tend to follow suit. So be careful of that. But one thing I wanted to point out here, which is interesting specifically, is Digibyte, which on the weekly time frame we are seeing a bullish divergence, which does not happen very often on, um, on altcoins. Now you don't see this on most of the altcoins. You can go and through, look through different ones, but this one specifically stood out to me, which is interesting because bullish divergences usually have a high hit rate of playing out. Now, because this is on a weekly chart, it could take several weeks for this to play out, but um, I think this is starting to look interesting where the price of Digibyte is 0 0.012. Obviously, the May 2021 highs were almost 18 cents. So we are looking at almost a 15X if that were to go back to the 2021 highs. Keep in mind, Digibyte is a pretty solid coin. It's been around since 2014, okay? It has multiple mining algorithms. It is behind Bitcoin. I think it's the second most decentralized coin that like Bitcoin can be used as peer-to-peer -peer digital cash, a store of value, but there are also smart contracts and things that can be built on it. So with the track record, I do think that it's very unlikely that Digibyte is gonna stop working or disappear in future. And if you can get a 10 or 15X, Look, it might still go lower. It might still drop another 50, 30 or 50% if Bitcoin crashes, if the whole market crashes. But the potential upside and the potential longevity of this coin, in my opinion, not financial advice, make it an interesting thing to keep an eye on. So that is it for this month's update. If you did enjoy it, please smash the like button. Leave a comment down below. What do you think is going to happen? Share this with your friends. The more people who see this, obviously, the better it is for the channel. The more people we can help navigate this bull market. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Get on my email list. You get a completely free one-hour crypto masterclass. While doing that, it's the first link in the description down below. Enter your name and email. You get the masterclass. You get future updates. You get notifications when I upload new videos. All of that good stuff, completely free. And if you want to join my Intelligent Cryptocurrency VIP membership, get ready for the next bull run. Learn how to navigate markets. Learn how to read charts. Second link in the description down below. Full 60-day money-back guarantee access to the community, access to me, access to our Discord, all of the educational materials. You are missing out big time if you are not in there. Second link in the description down below. Sign up. We'll see you inside. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.